Hi there, we are here at FMX 2012 at Film Academy's Research and Development booth. Today we would like to introduce you to our latest projects, like Stereobotic, a game that is specifically designed for an autostereoscopic display. We will also show the first results of our collaborative research project for stereoscopic tool development. And finally, we will introduce new tracking and performance capture tools that aid the virtual production workflow. Pretty much everything you see is based on the Film Academy application framework Frapper and the Caron framework from HCI in Heidelberg. Both of them are open source frameworks, so if you are interested in contributing, please contact us. Hello, I'm Michael Busler and here at the FMX 2012 I present this game for an autostereoscopic display. The idea of this game is that two players can see stereoscopic content from different view positions, so they have to talk to each other about what they see in the game. Here's this pillar, which only one player can see, the other cannot. For the first player, there's only a gap where the lava, so if I run in, the player will die immediately. But the other player can tell him there's a pillar, so you have to jump here at that position to come over this pillar. And this is Tatiana, she created all the character and all the graphics in the game. So Tatiana, what were you thinking when you created this character? It, it looks very special, it, only, it has no legs, so what is it about? I uh, wanted to create a cute uh, creature, a robot, and uh, he lost his uh, leg and the goal of this game to find it. When we are on set and we have two stereo cameras and we want to know how far the pixel is away from the camera center, then we usually use these two cameras and try to extract the depth maps from them. But this has some fundamental limits and our aim is to overcome these limits and to find out how we can extract real depth maps. One option to do this is to take this time of flight camera. The time of flight camera is based on the principle that two infrared light sources are used to uh, shine on the scene and this scene is then recorded and from the phase shift we can extract the real depth. The problem of this camera is that it only has 200 by 200 pixels and we need to upscale these 200 by 200 pixels to the full HD camera size. Up here we see the stereo pair as in a standard stereo rig and on the top right we see the infrared information we obtain from this time of flight camera. And from this infrared information we can extract depth information, which denote the distance of this camera from the scene. This can for example be used to insert CG characters or virtually change the distance of the stereo rig cameras. Sometimes when we are on set and we only have a single camera, we are also able to extract the depths from these cameras, assuming that the scene doesn't move. One option to do so is to take a lot of images from the scene, and in here we see one of these images, and each of these yellow points is one point we try to find in other images we recorded as well. And based on these points, we can triangulate each point, meaning that we can extract the depths of these points to create a 3D scene from the set. Here we see an example of such a point cloud which we extracted from these multiple views and we still see that they are, they are not very dense and one option to make them dense is to compute so-called optical flow. Optical flow is a method to, for each pixel, find correspondences from one image to the other image. So when we have these uh, multiple images we can already try to register them so that there is only a small amount of motion between these two. And to get these dense depth maps for each pixel, we can compute the optical flow on these already registered images. Here you see an example pair of these images. They are only very slightly moving. And when I start the algorithm, you can see how the optical flow, the motion field, is computed. Down here you see a color-coded uh, optical flow. Here you see the optical flow you actually want to have in the end, because for this example we know it. And on the right you see an, a coded image where you see all these arrows showing, showing the motion. And based on this motion we are able to compute the dense um, depth maps. Hello. To create useful workflows and tool sets we implement uh, the algorithms we uh, got from the HCI into our uh, Film Academy application framework Frapper you can see here on the screen.
Therefore, we have already implemented a structure for motion apps example in our application framework. Here on the top left side, you can see uh, and set. We have took some, some photos. Out of this image sequence, we can now generate a point cloud you can see on this side. On the lower side here, you can see uh, the algorithm for itself. It's split up into uh, several nodes. Uh, we do this because it uh, has some uh, advantages in computation and also in implementation. Uh, hello, my name is Martin Schwarz. I'm uh, doing my bachelor thesis at the research and develop department of the Animation Institute. And I want to show you my work, what I did there. Uh, this is a camera tracker. We implemented that in Frapper. We want to use that for virtual production. Now I want to show you how that works. We capture the camera to get natural key features with which we make a point cloud so we can estimate the pose of the camera. The scattered data we use to move a virtual camera like that, how the real camera is moving. This is an easy and cheap way to do your pre-visualization on the set. For the camera tracker, we use the modified version of PTAM of the University of Oxford. We use the fish eye to get as much as possible key features, which you see in this point cloud. Hello, my name is Nicole Rothel, and I do my bachelor thesis at the Animation Institute of Film Academy Baden-Württemberg. This project is about real-time full-body motion tracking with Microsoft Kinect to drive a character fast and easy and even markerless. We use the deep sensor of Microsoft Kinect to recognize the environment. It streams out a pattern and calculate the difference between this pattern to know how deep the information is. We use the Microsoft SDK for tracking. It delivers us the position of 20 joints, like the elbow or the hand. And we calculate from these positions the orientations and map it to the mesh in 3D room. So much from this year's FMX. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank MFG Baden-Württemberg Innovation Agency for IT for supporting us as part of the MFG Visual Experience Lab. I'd also like to mention that we constantly have offerings for paid internships and final thesis positions. So if you are interested in collaborating with our group, please contact us.